Hello everyone, welcome back to another session for our Nabard Agriculture and Rural Development. For today's topic, we are going to do on classification of field crops, okay? And in our previous uh, lecture, we have already studied about the branches of agriculture and also about agronomy, all right? So under agronomy, these field crops, they come under agronomy. And today we're going to talk something about these, what these field crops are, and also the classification of these field crops, all right? So first and foremost, let us understand what field crops are, okay? So field crops are basically any herbaceous plants, okay? Which are grown on a large scale in a cultivation field for agriculture purpose, all right? So remember, guys, yeah, uh, the word that you guys the key words that you guys have to remember here are herbaceous plants and these are in a large scale, all right? These are mostly for the agriculture purpose to meet the needs of the human uh, population, all right? Okay, so first thing here, herbaceous plants. What are herbaceous plants? So the herbaceous plants are those plants where the, uh, the stem of these plants, these are soft, okay? So these are herbaceous plants, these are grown in large scale or these are cultivated in a large scale for agriculture purpose as they provide the uh, materials and the products for the human needs. Okay, some of the uh, examples of field crops uh, would be your grains, alright? When we're talking about grains, the, uh, we use the edible seeds, alright? So what are the seeds that we use to consume? Uh, all the cereals will come under your grains like rice, we have wheat, we have uh, we have a barley, jor, bajra, all of that, these will come under your grains. And when we're talking about forages, forages are those plants uh, or those crops which are used as a hay or a silage for your livestock. Uh, it's basically, in simple terms, food for your livestock, okay? And now coming to sugar, uh, the plants or the uh, crops which are uh, grown for the to get the byproduct as sugar, right? We have examples like sugar cane, uh, sugar beet, and all of that will come under your sugar. And also for oil, the plants which are grown uh, for oil purpose, from where we can extract the oil. So what are the uh, crops? If you go to your kitchen as well. Uh, just look it up, and then you'll always find a mustard oil in your kitchen, right? So. And the same way, the plants which are grown for oil to extract the oil from. So the examples I would give you would be first mustard. We also have a groundnut. We have sunflower, seth flower, sesame, and etc. All of that will come under your oil. And lastly, we have fiber crops. So fiber crops are the ones uh, from where we can extract the byproduct as a cloth. Uh, another example is these cotton as well as. Jute. These are the common, uh, most used fiber crops. Right. So I hope this is clear, guys. Now let's go to our next slide. In our next slide, we are going to talk on the classification of field crops. So field crops can be classified on the basis of number one, which is the climate. When we're looking into the climate, some crops these are uh, grown in the hotter region, and some crops they are grown in the cooler region. Right. Uh, for example. Uh, <clears throat> sorry uh, in the areas where tropical areas so uh, when we think about tropical areas think of amazon so the crops which are found in Am amazon cannot be found in the arctic region right because of the temperature differences so in that way these field crops can be subdivided into two all right which is tropical as well as uh, temperate on the basis of climate and now coming to the season so uh, when we're talking about season uh, we basically um, uh, focus on the time on where it is grown, all right? So we have three seasons. Uh, first is rainy season, we have summer season, as well as winter seasons. So on that basis, this uh, field crops can be uh, classified. And the third one here is on lifespan. And when we're talking about lifespan, it is the, uh, uh, just as humans have lifespan, the same way plants also have lifespan, okay? Uh, the lifespan can vary from uh, each other, such as uh, in annually, or it can be biennial, or it can be perennial. When we're talking about annuals, 
they are they mostly complete their whole life life cycle uh, which is in plants in terms of plants we have vegetative and reproductive so these two stages to complete in one season so uh, for uh, roughly for generally for these uh, field crops or in plants we have a life cycle of about six months okay guys and this six months life cycle is also known as one season all right okay now moving on to the root system so every plant or the every crop has different types of root system and when it's looking into the root system they can be classified into three uh, i'm just going to briefly uh, make you go through these but in detail we're going to talk later on when we discuss all these classification in detail right so for root systems we have three we have some some of the plants they are deep rooted all right where their roots are really long right and some of the plants they have a medium they are mediumly rooted means the length is also in the medium and the last one we have short rooted plants okay so in this basis these uh field crops can be divided into three uh, the last one here is morphological and botanical similarity and when we're looking into this this is one of the most important and the oldest method of classification and through these botanical classification a person will be able to group these um, crops into a certain a family or a certain group or a genus right for example uh, another example i would give here is also in field crops the cereals uh, rice wheat barley they all belong to uh, the same group because they match uh, on their morphological similarity uh, morphologically as well as botanically they match with each other so that's why they are grouped together and that's why they are called as field crops all right i hope this is clear and now let's move on to another slide uh, where we're going to talk um, more about the classification the first classification here is on the basis of climate right so we have two classifications under this or two uh, groups under this the first one here is on tropical crops so what are tropical crops tropical crops are the crops which are grown in these monsoon climate and there is a substantial and continuous cloud cover right so this is a characteristic of a tropics of a tropical zone right so the crops which are grown in the tropical zone these are known as tropical crops all right so what are the keywords that you guys need to remember here is monsoon climate right and it has to be hot it has to be humid and it has to be sunny right so just whenever you come across tropical just remember amazon how the amazon's weather or the climate is hot humid and uh, hot humid and rainy right so these are all the keywords that you guys can remember and the crops which are grown here are known as the tropical crops uh, an example for this i would give this rice okay and the second one here is sugarcane so these are the some of the crops. There are other examples as well, but I'm just going to give you two examples here right now. Um, so these are some of the crops which are which belong to tropical zone. Alright, and let's move to another slide. Here we have temperate crops. In the same way, the crops which are grown in the cooler region are known as temperate crops. Okay, so what are the features of this temperate zone? So these uh, temperate zone they have a cool and less humid weather so a cool and a dry weather all right think of arctic it's very cool and it is dry weather right we won't find rainfall much or humidity much in that type of uh, areas uh, so these plants these tropic the temperate plants they endure cold and they go or go for dormancy so um dormancy or uh, it's like a term which is used for plants in the same way where we use hibernation for animals like in bears uh, bears also go for hibernation during the winter time right in the same way plants also go for dormancy in simple terms um so they go for dormancy by shedding off all their leaves during winter as you go up to the north um you you wouldn't find a very uh, fleshy leaves right you won't find green fleshy leaves you'll find all those dried uh, twigs and those leaves which those plants or the trees which shed their leaves right so this so this is what it meant and um, these temperate crops examples i would give here are wheat all right wheat is also 
a tempered frog where, where it needs a cooler and drier period of uh, this thing. Environmental conditions. And another one I will give here is gram. Okay, so grams are also uh, temperate crops. Okay, I hope this is clear. So as you're studying for uh, the exams, guys, uh, do remember that you guys need to study the examples really well for all of these terms, okay? All, all of these classification as well. And now moving on to another slide. Uh, so the next slide is on the basis of season. As I've said, there's three seasons. The first one is Karif, which is also known as a rainy season, right? Uh, let me just change the color of this. We'll be much more clear for you all. Rainy. And we have Z, which is summer. Okay. And lastly, we have Ruby. So, Ruby, these are winter. Okay. So guys, remember all these words, they come from an Arabic word. Okay, so this basically means uh, spring. I hope this is here. Uh, and okay, uh, now we're going to the, on the basis of uh, season. So the first one is Karif crops, right? So Karif crops are the crops which are mostly grown uh, during the monsoon period. So when uh, when you think of this keyword monsoon, what what's the month that uh, resides with the monsoon? Which is in from June to October. So June to October, we have rainy season started from June, right? So in that way, these crops are also uh, uh, grown on the onset of monsoon, which is on from June till it can be grown till October. All right, so these are good in monsoon months. Remember, this is the first point that you guys need to remember. The second point that you guys need to remember uh, is what happens, what is the climatic factor or the uh, climatic changes that happens during the monsoon. So the first one is it's rainy, right? And we have humidity is also high. We have it's sunny, right? So these are the features again. So it requires a warm, uh, it requires a wet weather, as well as uh, uh, so the wet weather and warm weather and high humidity. Okay. Uh, last point here is they require a short day length for flowering. All right. So when you are coming through this new term called short day length for flowering, let me just explain to you guys in simple terms. All right. For example, this is the line uh, in a 24 hours. In a one day, we have around 24 hours, right? 24 hours. And this is from zero, right? So we divide them into two, right? Day and night. So 12 hours, this is the critical minimum. Okay, guys. So uh, short day plants are the plants uh, which require or they flower when they are exposed to the day length of more less than the critical minimum. So if it's uh, if they need the sunlight for less than twelve hours, then they are known as the short day plant. So um, it's also known as short day plants. And if they require um, sunlight for more than this twelve hours which is the critical minimum then they are known as a long day plant all right so that's how we differentiate this short day plant and long day plants and uh, these are mostly on the basis for flowering okay guys uh, flowering is a very important point for this um so this whole process is also known as the photoperiodism photoperiodism is um is a condition or is a reaction of the plant towards the, uh, the axis of sunlight or any light all right so this is some difference and we also have this term called the neutral day plant so where uh, neutral day plant these are the plants which are not affected by the sunlight all right by photoperiodism so either way you can flower right i hope this is clear so this current season they uh, the curry crops sorry they are grown for monsoon months uh, the key features uh, 
is that they need warm and wet weather and they are short day plants all right okay so now let's go to another slide okay so examples of curry season crops are rice jowar and rana so uh, rice is basically grown and especially in india rice is grown as a curry uh, crop all over the country right during the summer months when there's high rainfall right when there is warm humid weather uh, it can also be grown during rabi season sometimes right but that's rarely and we also have jowar and we also have brown nuts so these are some of the examples of curry crops and now coming to rabi crops Ruby crops is the complete opposite of these um, curry crops. All right, so in ruby crops, these are mostly these are also known as the winter crops. So the, when does the winter uh, comes? The winter comes on the onset of October and it goes on till March, right? So remember it like that, okay, guys? So these crops are grown during the winter season. And so what happens? What are the chemical, uh, what the climatic features during the winter months? It is dry. It is very cold, and it, no humidity is there, right? So now you get it, right? So now the crops, these are well, they grow well in a cold and in a dry weather. Okay. And the last one here is that they require a longer day length for flowering. So we already discussed what a a long day plant is so these furry crops they mostly belong to the long day plant it means they need a more than more sunlight for flowering uh, some of the examples i would suggest here are a uh, gram all right and we also have wheat all right so this wheat and gram remember we also have cited the same examples during the temperate because these these they need a cooler a drier temperature all right so like this is here and now let's go to a lot section where we're going to talk about zaid so zaid is also known as the summer crops all right so these crops are basically grown during the summer so when the summer comes summer comes from the onset of march till june right and after that from july or june and it starts to rain okay so one of the features climatic features of these zaid season is that these they need a cold but sorry this is hot but dry weather okay so they uh the main differences between this rabi uh the karif and the zaid is that first one karif remember they need a uh, hot and wet weather rabi they need cool and dry and zaid they need a uh, hot and dry not humid okay so these are the features and they also require longer day length for flowering okay so these are some of the features now an example i would give for zaid is mostly in vegetables okay guys uh, so in vegetables the cucumber bitter gourd pumpkin tomatoes all of that they are in the summer crops or in the zaid crops all right now let's go to another slide all right here and here this is the very important classification of very important classification of field crops so this is all the botanical and morphological similarities so um, this uh, classification is basically given by Carl Linnaeus all right so this Carl Linnaeus this person he is a scientist a botanist uh, he's also known as the father of taxonomy. Okay. So he's also known as the father of taxonomy. Now, like, coming to the classification, uh, or when we're talking in terms of botan botanically, then we need to classify them as a plant kingdom. This is the highest for the kingdom or the genre for these plants. So these plant kingdom is also known as spermatophytes. All right, uh, remember this term, and we're gonna discuss something about this term in the coming slide. All right, so all you guys need to remember here is that plant kingdom, they are divided into two, angiosperms, and we also have gymnosperms. All right, and further, angiosperms can be subdivided into monocotyledons and dicotyledons. 
I'm not going to go in detail with this at this moment in the slide, but uh, as we uh, move forward with our slides, I'm going to discuss in detail. Right, so for now, let's just understand what these angiosperms and what these gymnosperms are. So angiosperms are basically uh, plants or a group of plants where the seed is enclosed or the ovule is enclosed within by the ovary. All right, and uh, gymnosperms are the seeds which are unenclosed by the ovary, so the ovary doesn't enclose the ovule. So suppose the ovule is an immature form of a seed, okay guys? And the ovary will be enclosing the uh, seed or the ovule, all right? But here in gymnosperms, the seeds are exposed, all right? So this is the basic difference between these. Uh, the ovules are here are enclosed. The keyword that you guys need to remember, enclosed seed. Okay, and the keyword in gymnosperm that you guys need to remember is unenclosed or the naked seed. All right, I have this is here. Now let's go to another slide where we're just going to discuss more about it. And remember, guys, we talked about the spermatophytes, which is also known as the plant uh, kingdom, right? So this plant kingdom is also known as spermatophytes. These are also known as uh, phenograms, the phenogamy, right? And they comprise of those plants which have seeds in them, all right? So uh, anything that has, that consists of seed is known as, comes under spermatophytes or under the plant kingdom. As all the plants, we know that they are um, reproduced through seeds that bite naturally, right? So these are also known as the seed plants. I have that here. And now coming to the main differences between um, angiosperms and gymnosperms. First one here is these are seed producing flowering plants. Okay guys, remember that these are also flowering plants and they are also fruit bearing plants. Uh, how you can remember that as you, when you, whenever we walk in a park or anywhere, uh, or in a garden, whenever you see all those blue blooms of flowers, right? The flowering, the flowers everywhere. So all these plants, uh, wh whichever plants they flower, they all belong to angiosperms. Okay, if it, that plant doesn't flower, then most probably it belongs to gymnosperms. Okay, that is the trick to remember. It. Um, another thing is that we already talked about the seeds, enclosed and unenclosed seeds, right? And so these are hardwood. All right. And in gymnosperms, these are mostly uh, softwood, okay? So basically, uh, the main difference between uh, hardwood and softwood is that this hardwood, they basically um, shed their leaves, okay? Or they are deciduous during the winter season. Uh, whereas on the other hand, softwood, these are mostly evergreen. So they do not shed their leaves. Examples of angiosperms, okay, these are lilies, right? Um, the beautiful lilies, we have orchids, we have roses, peas, sunflowers, oaks, maples, apple also can is on the angiosperms. Anything that is fruit bearing, these are all angiosperms. And when coming to gymnosperms, gymnosperms, these are uh, more of like a needle-like. The shape of the plant or the tree is of the needle-like. Um, here we have examples are given as pines. If you go to the upper Himachal areas, you'll find pines, right? So there, you do not, these pines, they do not, there's only leaves in them, right? Uh, they do not flower or they do not bear any fruit. Okay, so... The fir is also another example, and we also have cedar. Okay, so these are some of the examples of uh, gymnosperms. I hope the differences are clear between these two. All right, now let's come into this uh, another slide here. I just want to show you the how the seeds are enclosed by the ovary in the fruit and in the flower. So this is of angiosperms. Okay. Okay, so these are the seeds as you can see, the black color, these are the seeds or so seeds are the mature ovules, okay guys? And these seeds are enclosed by the ovary. So this part that you're seeing here is ovary. 
All right, and from the top, it's starting to flower. And once the flower, uh, once it becomes mature, the flower, these petals will fall off and it will form a fruit, right? And this, this immature ovary then becomes mature and it becomes a fruit. And that's how the seeds, the mature seeds are enclosed by the fruit or by the ovary. Right, right, this is here. So anything that you can, uh, anything that is flowering, these are all litchi, these are all the flowering uh, crops and the trees, these all come under angiosperm. Okay, so now coming to uh, the, the main differences between the angiosperms through that di diagrammatic view is that here in gymnosperms, the seeds, as you can see here, um, the, these are immature seeds. Um, this is an example of a pine cone, okay? I'm not sure whether you guys have seen. Uh, if you guys haven't seen, you can just Google it up and see how a pine cone looks like, okay? So this is uh, how a pine cone is. The immature cone looks like this. And once it becomes a bit of mature, it becomes like this, all right? And um, see, the seeds, these are the seeds. And as it becomes mature, these seeds out here, these are not enclosed by any fruit or by the ovary. Um, let me just draw a big diagram for you guys. So suppose this is the scales, right? And the seeds would be present somewhere. Let me just draw the scales first, or the cones. Right? And then the seeds will be basically present in this, like this. So the seeds are actually not enclosed by the ovary, okay? So in that way, that this is the diagrammatic view of this how gymnosperm seeds look like. But right, this is here. And on the other hand, tomato seeds, example of tomato, apple, and Chinese lantern is given, where the seeds, this white color seeds, these are enclosed by the mature ovary, which is the fruit, right? I hope this is clear now. Let's go to another slide. Okay, guys, so this one is also the a life picture of how a cone, pine cone, looks like. So the seeds will be present in this one, in these gaps that is present here. Alright? Okay, now let's go to another slide here. I remember guys, these angiosperms, these were divided into two, subdivided into two parts, right? The first was, remember, monopods, and the second was dicots. And now, <clears throat> these are divided into two on the basis of the presence of cotyledons, okay? So cotyledons, these are the significant parts of the embryo within the seed of the plant, and it is defined as the primary leaf in the embryo of the higher plants, which is also known as the seed leaf. Um, okay, let me just draw it for you guys for a better understanding here. So suppose this is gram seed or a pea seed, right? And then after some time, if you soak it, uh, you guys must have eaten some sprouts as well right at home, right, Jenna? And once you soak it, inside the uh, water then after some time it starts to sprout right and you'll see small green color um, organ or part coming out like this so this is cotyledon right right so this is also known as the seed leaf so after you grow them in this uh in the soil then this will become this whole seed will part into two parts and they will become the uh, leaves, right? Um, okay, so now let me just make it, make you guys understand more. The first one here is that they consist of plants having seeds with one cotyledon. So in monopods, as the name suggests, mono, one cotyledon, and in dicot, two, which means two cotyledon. All right, so two of these. All right, so these are herbaceous. We already discussed what herbaceous is. Herbaceous it means the leaves or uh, the stem is soft. Whereas in dicotyledons, it can be herbaceous or it can be woody, where the stem is hard. Okay. Okay. The examples of monopods given here are: we have grasses, we have sugarcane, maize, rice, wheat. So uh, all these grasses, sugarcane, maize, rice, wheat. If you have seen the stems of these uh, crops, then definitely it is very 
soft, right? Another example I would give here is sugarcane. So sugarcane st stem, we could easily chew it down and make a juice out of it, right? So it is herbaceous. And on the other hand, we have mango, we have neem. So we cannot go about and, you know, bite off a mango bark, right? Or, or a mango stem, right? So th that's why it is woody, okay? And it is also herbaceous because some flower also comes under this. Some legumes also come under this. Some lentils also come under this. So this example I've given was on legumes. As the gram, they uh, once they once we sow them, once we dip the seeds, when the seed comes out, then it breaks. The seed breaks into two parts, and the cotyledon comes out into a two leaf. Right. So this is how we differentiate between monocotyledons and dicotyledons. So guys, remember uh, to remember all these things because these are the basic concepts that you guys need to understand as you're going forward and studying this agriculture. Okay. Uh, if you go, if you don't know the concept, if you don't clear out your concepts uh, right now, then going forward you will be having trouble in understanding some of the terms. Right. So it is much more. Uh, so I would suggest you all to remember and try to study on these terms from now on. So, okay, now let's go on to another slide. Okay, here I have just given a diagrammatic view of how a cotyledon would look like and how a dicot and a monocot would look like. So in the first picture here, we have is a live picture of how a seed sprouts from the soil. Right, so this is the seed, and from here you can see two leaves are coming out. So these are cotyledons, I would say, right? And these two leaves is of a dicot. And if it's if one leaf comes out from this type of seed, then it is known as a monocot. Okay. Um, here, for example, is in this diagram I you. Two leaves coming up. That's why it's dicot. One leaf coming up. That's why it is monocot. I have this is here. Okay, now uh, to make it more, uh, this is actually not that important, but then just for your general knowledge or more if you want to have more knowledge, then this monocots, there are given more differences on monocots and dicots. So monocots, one cotyledon, we already know, okay, and the veins are usually parallel. So these veins, uh, they're talking about your leaf veins, okay. So normally a leaf would look like this. Right, and the vein is the one that goes through this. All right, so these are mostly parallel. Okay, so these are one cotyledon. And uh, another example I would give here is of grasses. So whenever you've seen a grasses, uh, a grass leaf, then it's normally parallel. All right, they have a one vein right in the middle. So that's why it is known as veins are parallel. And if it's net like then it is um, dicots and there's another one here, the stems are uh, the vascular bundle, they are usually complexly arranged, whereas in dicots these are arranged in a simple manner in a ring form. Uh, when you're talking about the fibrous root system and when you're talking about the tap root system, uh, fibrous and monocots, dicots, we have tap root. So what are these fibrous roots? Uh, fibrous roots are the roots where the we have so many primary. Yeah, this is a primary branch, and we have so many secondary branch uh, branches of these roots coming out. All right. So this is what the fiber fibrous root looks like. And if you're talking about the and if you're talking about the tap root system, so in tap root the primary would belong and then we'll have a lesser number of secondary or branches, right? So this is the main difference between the tap root and a fibrous root. The last one here is that the flower parts are usually multiples of three, where and in this floral part, they are usually multiples of four or five, okay? So here, basically the flowers would be, the petals especially, would be in the multiples of three or six but then here it is in the multiples of four or five it means a double of this we have eight petals it can be in eight petals as well so these are some of the extra um, information that i would like to give you guys on on cot and dicot right so i got it here and that's all for today guys uh, and we will be meeting 
uh, for the next session with a further uh, classification on the field crops and if you guys have any more doubts or if you guys have any questions uh, feel free to drop in the uh, in the query section or you can also contact any of our team members and we'll be ready to help and if you guys have some doubts as well you can also drop it in the telegram we also have a telegram group so we can drop in your uh, questions or any queries or any doubts that you guys have and we'll be happy to help you guys out thank you so much and we'll be meeting for the next session